That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Cobweb, the directorial debut of Samuel Baudin, which Lionsgate is releasing July 21st, 2023. Directorial debut. Uh, however, previously directed a French horror series for Netflix called Marianne, which I think... Oh, didn't we watch some of that? We might have watched some of that during the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, and of course, this title is not to be confused with Vincent Minnelli's uh, film, The Cobweb, or Kim Ji Woon's uh, also uh, same titled film that was premiered at Cannes this year. Oh. The story, horror strikes when an eight-year-old boy named Peter tries to investigate the mysterious knocking noises that are coming from inside the walls of his house and a dark secret that his sinister parents kept hidden from him. I was so disappointed in this movie. I did not care for it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I didn't care for this movie either. I was surprised to learn that was on the 2018 blacklist for scripts. Uh, Chris Dom Thomas Devlin is the screenwriter whose previous credit was 2022's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, where they're driving around the Tesla? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I It just felt like someone took like elements of like seven or eight different horror films and just threw them at the audience like meh there you go you make a movie out of it yeah it, it's it feels kind of derivative even though there's some interesting there's there's technically an interesting angle here but i'm super confused about what's meant to be supernatural and why well and the most interesting part of the story is not really even focused on so Peter lives with his sinister parents, as the premise says, and immediately we know something's up with these people, if you didn't read the premise. And it's a week before Halloween, and we find out Peter's not allowed to go trick-or-treating. And he's at the dinner table, and this is after we see he gets bullied at school. Mm -hmm. He's at the dinner table with his parents, and the dad's like, well, we have to tell you something. A few years ago, you know, that house at the end of the corner or the end of the street, a girl lived there and she went missing. The last house on the left. So that's why you can't go outside trick-or-treating. But of course, as the audience, it's like, well, the parents kidnapped her. That's where the knocking in the walls is coming from. Maybe this girl's locked in there somewhere. No, it's worse than that. We're told that those parents are responsible for that missing girl. They killed her. And Peter has a sister he doesn't know about, an older sister. That si sister witnessed the murder. So the parents lock her in the walls of this house. It's very Jane Eyre. Where she has lived all this time, and that's who's knocking on the walls. Mm -hmm. She's the voice this Peter is hearing. So just to wrap it up, she can. Peter ends up killing his parents kind of in self-defense and unlocks his sister. He poisons them. Yeah. But, yeah, he's influenced <laughs> to kill them. Yeah. Is that, can poisoning be killed sure, you're, No, I guess it can. It's premeditated, <laughs> yeah. sure. But uh, he kills the parents, his parents, unlocks his sister from inside the walls, and when she pops out, she's like that lady from Barbarian, or mm -hmm. like, she's like this creature with Rapunzel-length hair. And looking like the, the special effects from Smile. Yeah, if you mix Smile and Beetlejuice, mm -hmm. I was not into how that thing looked. And Malign like you already, malignant. or Malignant, and you already mentioned, there seems to be a supernatural component to her. We can get to it. But something I didn't mention is Peter has a substitute teacher. Miss Divine, played by Cleopatra Coleman. Who has only met him, it would appear, once or twice before he gets expelled from school because his sister, who's influencing him through the walls, convinces him to injure his bully. So Peter throws his bully down a flight of stairs and gets expelled from school. But the teacher is worried about him mm -hmm. because at one point he painted something that said, help me. But she goes to her principal and he tells her, don't worry about it. And like, There's a lot of children like Peter. And there's not enough to proceed. And she goes to the parents' house once, twice, a third time, because she was able to slip Peter her phone number and he calls her to say, help me. So she shows up at the end. Which is such an awkward scene because he calls her and she's just eating a sandwich in the classroom. <laughs> yeah, really awkwardly eating a sandwich in the middle of the classroom. But she calls his... She gets a call from Peter, so she decides to go down there. But while she's heading down there, the bully and a couple of his friends 
break into Peter's house and like start to destroy it. But of course, the sister who has now been released kills all of them. Mrs. De Miss Divine shows up and she helps Peter lock his sister back in the wall. The end. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Peter oh, is played by Woody Norman of the film Come On, Come On, starring uh, Joaquin Phoenix, which we also reviewed but you didn't see. Uh, the parents are played, Carol and Mark are played by Lizzie Kaplan, who's fresh off the Fatal Attraction television reboot, and uh, Anthony Starr, who you recognize from The Boys, most likely. The only performance I liked was The, the Kid. He, Woody Norman was fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the parents just seem so off the wall, but not in like a fun, over-the-top way. They needed to be like, is it Wendy Roby and Everett McGill and People Under the Stairs? They needed to be like that. Something like that, but they just seem weird, especially, I mean, the dad just seems so cold, and then the mom seems crazy, but not in a fun way. I... <laughs> Cleopatra Coleman, who is also in Infinity Pool and a film I really liked called uh, A Lot of Nothing from last year, she, the first time she pops up at the parents' house, which feels very John Carpenter's Halloween, Haddonfield, Illinois neighborhood, uh, Lizzie Kaplan goes, I was a teacher myself before I became a mother. The dialogue's what? weird. I don't know why that lady, the substitute teacher, I might have made one attempt to alert because there has to be a protocol for educators who work, who work with children. Like, they're mandated reporters. I'm sure they know. You, like, you go to the school resource officer or the principal. One time. You can do anonymous <laughs> reporting to social services. Something. Well. I'm not showing up at the house after they already told me, get the F out of here. Mm -hmm. She shows up one more time. And then one time after that. Well, Why didn't she call the police? <laughs> and by, the, by the time she... The, I think the second time she shows up... Peter has been locked up. He's, he's literally chained in the basement and has been expelled from school. So she she says, I'm going to bring you his math test. She, she needed some excuse to come visit him. And in the most ridiculous way, there's he's like pounding at the door, but also the washing machine is going on in its cycle. I, 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 First of all... I thought that was dumb. She shows up to the house like, where has your son been? My son was expelled from your school for committing this violent act. So that's where he is, at home. And then she's like, well, can I see him? No, bitch, he's grounded. Get the hell out. But then they're like, no, please come in. And then, like you mentioned, the while the Peter is knocking on the walls, the washing machine's going and the teacher stops. I just thought that was so clunky. It is. I don't it's need just... to let you in my house. I don't need to explain to you where my son is. You know where he is. At home in trouble. So I just felt like that mood it was trying to create, like, oh, the teacher knows something sinister is going on. That didn't make sense. My kid's been expelled for being bad. Like, he's in trouble at home. Like, it just didn't make sense to me that she would show up like that. Then she writes her phone number in big red letters on the front of this math test that she's claiming is the reason she had to return, go to the house. And the mom takes it, I guess doesn't even look at it because she just gives it to Peter. Like, didn't notice that this phone number was on there. And that's how Peter calls uh, Ms. Divine in the end. I just, I think at the bare min, I mean, I don't even know what the better story would have been because this thing is all over the place. I think clearly the most interesting part of the story is the parents. Who are these parents? They kidnapped a girl, killed her, and then thought it was a good idea to torture their own daughter, who witnessed it, by locking her in the walls? With, like, some Joseph Fritzl shit? Yes, like, that would have been more interesting. I agree. They, they also have this... They literally have a pumpkin patch in the backyard with some of the biggest, healthiest-looking pumpkins that you might see. There's a pumpkin blight going on. The dead girl that's disappeared is buried under them. There's a moment... V very poorly buried. Very... Yeah, like... <laughs> Uh, because Peter's out there with his hands kind of shoveling dirt and finds that girl's skull. <laughs> and I don't understand how he knew the coordinates of... Because his sister tells him to go dig in the backyard. Yeah. And I don't, I don't understand how he knew right exactly where to right. dig. And then we get a point where the dad... Because now the dad knows that the son is up to something. The dad brings Peter out to the yard and says, You need to dig a hole under the guise of burying some of the rotten pumpkins. But I was like, ooh... He's obviously having the son... He's testing him. Well, I, I thought he was having the son dig his own grave. Or that, yeah. But then it's like, well, that doesn't make sense because you didn't kill the daughter. It just is like the most interesting part of this, we just gloss right over. And then I don't even know why we even spent time with the substitute teacher. She had nothing to do. 
Why at is the, she the substitute? Why is she the, at the bare minimum? It should have been Peter's like full time teacher who knows him right. and is invested in. Yeah, him. who cares about? Who him. cares about him? This lady. Why are you doing this? I was confused in the time period. It would appear that maybe it's the nineties. Yeah, okay. Maybe. well, because the, the, they don't show a lot. There's like how it's not specific. The location doesn't seem to be specific. Like a lot of things in this film that seem purposefully vague, so we can just gloss over and not ask questions about more obvious missing elements and plot holes. I don't have many notes. I really didn't like the voice that the creepy sister in the walls is using because she's she's older than Peter, but she's talking like kind of like a little girl... But then her actual voice is like, I don't know, like very Lindsay Lohan. Like, Do you think that's what Jennifer Lopez does? Oh. Um, yeah. There's another scene where they're confronted. There's one creepy scene. Where Which is what? Woody Norman's having the nightmare and his dad is doing some creepy Jacob's Ladder shit in the corner. And he's like, look at what you did to yeah. your mother. Yeah, and, and then we see the mom run towards the door. But again, I don't understand, like, is there... Is there a supernatural component to the story? How did this when she got when the sister does get out, she seems very strong. Oh, she can climb the walls like Spider-Man. She's in a well that's like what, 20 feet deep, and she jumps like halfway up before she climbs it like the rest of it like Spider-Man. Then at one point she like jumps out of somewhere like at superhuman levels. Then those bullies who come to tear up the house, one of them, she I don't know what she does to him, but the body explodes. Like she stepped on a wood tick that was full of blood. Yes. So what is she eating? You know, I can suspend disbelief if the other things are distracting enough, but because I was, it was so poorly put together and the story's ridiculous, I just kept focusing on like, this girl's been in this wall for at least as long as Peter's been alive. What is she eating? Why can't they smell her shitting and peeing in the walls? I don't know. But then we showed that the walls are flimsy and full of holes. And That's right. And Miss Devine knocks a really large hole into the wall in a very short amount of time with a blunt instrument. Yeah. So if Miss Devine is able to tear down a wall without much effort, how is this super strong creature beast sister in a wall not able to get out? And we see that there is a hole that she is big enough for her to look through and put her arm through, it would seem. She couldn't, they make that hole look like it's like two feet of concrete, mm -hmm. which would not make sense in the interior of a house. But then again, we see other, the t substitute tearing down a wall very easily. That girl spent all those years in that wall. Oh, we didn't even mention. The reason Peter is hearing the voices and the knocking now is because his sister says, well, I had to wait until you were big enough. To move this grandfather clock. To move clock. this grandfather clock that's blocking the door for her to get out of. That was the dumbest thing. For real? Again, it's like a, a, with just the teeniest little bit of inspection, all of this, this seems to fall away like a, a cobweb under a... So for a decade, she just sat in the walls doing push-ups, waiting for the day when she can, her brother can move this big-ass clock. And these parents, these nefarious parents seem real dumb. They seem dumb because it's like, you killed a girl, buried her body, and then you choose to torture your own daughter who witnessed it by locking her in the walls. Why not just kill her? And then they don't seem very careful. You allow a stranger in your house. You let your kid go to school knowing they're hearing stuff. He's going to tell, like, which he does. He paints a picture saying, help me on it. I killed a girl and I liked it. Uh, there's, a, there's a moment where Lizzie Kaplan sits down with the kid and she's like, okay, you can't have any more nightmares. No more nightmares. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all I have. I, again, it feels like it's cobbled together from a lot of other sources. And I don't know that this filmed in Bulgaria in 2020. So I don't know. You know, this comes out after Barbarian, which is unfortunate because I thought that was a really well-constructed, uh, albeit similar film, uh, or, or with similar themes. But it reminded me of that terrible Jessica Chastain film, Mama, directed by Andy Muschietti, which I couldn't stand. There was a Swedish film that we saw at a Sundance called Knocking. That was more interesting. That was more interesting, but in even that film felt very familiar, but I don't know. Like I also didn't like how this film looked because it's just straight out the gate, everything is drab. Like yes. It just feels like it's handing us everything, like here are all the ingredients to what could be an interesting story, and then they just leave it there. Uh, the director of film filmography was, uh, photography was Philip Lozano, but I think that it had some, it had some nice shots with some shadows. Like there's one scene where Woody Norman is on the stairs and you can see the the large 
shadows of his parents reflected on him and they're 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 arguing about him that's um, true and then the first time we see the sister it looks like there's some creature like almost like a hyena in mm-hmm, the shadows mm-hmm. that did look the, the, again but it's almost only with the shadows that anything kind of looks interesting because i, I think it being inside this kind of dilapidated house gets a little tiring and not in the most beneficial way the stakes don't seem that high. This little boy could just... I, I, I mean, I don't know. This substitute teacher drove me crazy. Mm-hmm. It's a chop for me. What would you give this movie? One and a half. I would give it one out of five. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>